This episode is brought to you by Aerolo, the world's first eSIM store to offer affordable local data packs in over 190 countries and regions. Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Study Call with Chief McCoy. In this episode, we will find out if the water produced by ships is safe to drink. In the previous episode, I showed you how ships convert seawater into fresh water by means of the distillation plant. You saw the process that the seawater goes through in order to get rid of the salt content until finally going to the ship's fresh water tanks when the salinity has dropped below 10 ppm. But is this water safe for humans to drink? Well, ships are required to have a dedicated drinking water line, which is separate from the domestic freshwater line. That means they are designed to carry potable water and regulations are actually very strict in making sure that the drinking water line is isolated and with no possibility of getting a cross flow from the domestic water line. But even though it is the case, for ocean going vessels, the water flowing in both the domestic and the drinking water line is actually produced from the same source which is the freshwater generator. So the question of whether it is safe to drink or not has generated a lot of differing opinions and most of them are from seafarers themselves. But before we dive into the detailed explanation, let me first show you the process that the distilled water has to go through before being considered as potable. From the freshwater generator, water is delivered and stored in the drinking water storage tank which is regularly cleaned and dosed with chlorine tablets or other disinfectants which are suitable for drinking water. From there, it is suctioned by the drinking water pump and stored again in a hydrofoil tank. This hydrofoil tank is just a small tank which is kept pressurized at around 5 bar by means of a pocket of compressed air pushing down on the water. This small tank actually serves like an accumulator which keeps the water pressure always within the specified range all throughout the drinking water line. From the hydrofoil tank, the water passes through the mineralizer, where it will absorb trace amounts of minerals like calcium and magnesium. After that, it will pass through the UV sterilizer, where it will be exposed to ultraviolet radiation, which will effectively kill any bacteria and other microorganisms in the water. From there, it will be distributed to the various potable water faucets and drinking fountains all over the ship. Seems pretty straightforward, right? So is the water safe to drink? As I have mentioned, there has been a lot of skepticism as to whether the ship's drinking water is safe for human consumption, primarily from the seafarers themselves. One of their biggest concerns is chemical contamination because the evaporator side of the distillation plant gets injected with a chemical solution and they're afraid that the chemical also gets evaporated and gets mixed with the freshwater production. Okay, first of all, yes, there is a chemical that gets injected into the evaporator while production is going on. And the rate of injection is around 20 milliliters per ton of freshwater produced. This liquid chemical is a blend of polymers and anti-foam agents designed to control scale formation and foam in evaporators. Now, a few of the viewers from last episode made comments about salt buildup in the evaporator tubes. And yes, that happens, especially if the evaporator is not cooled down sufficiently before shutting down. And even if proper shutdown procedures are followed, scale buildup will still happen gradually. This chemical, this evaporator treatment, was designed to slow down that specific process in order to maintain the efficiency of the evaporator's heating surfaces. In any case, the polymers in this chemical, while still in liquid form, will bind with the scale-forming salts in the seawater and 
prevent them from sticking to the surface of the evaporator tubes. The anti-foam agents, on the other hand, minimizes carryover of salt molecules with the water vapor, thereby maintaining the distillate quality. Now, since these chemical agents bind with salt and other molecules in the seawater, they basically become heavier, so no, they won't evaporate and rise up together with the water vapor. They just float around in the brine until they eventually get suctioned by the adductor and discharged overboard. So again, no, the chemicals do not contaminate the freshwater production. However, there are a few other issues which brings doubt as to whether the ship's water is safe to drink. And we'll discuss that right after this break. If you frequently travel to different countries like seafarers do, I'm pretty sure that one of the first things you do is to buy a local SIM card. In this day and age, it is imperative for most people to be online and to stay connected. But sometimes, switching between SIM cards can be a hassle and there might be instances wherein you won't even be able to buy one. It's a good thing there's Aerolo, the world's first eSIM store to offer affordable local data packs in over 190 countries and regions. The eSIM is a new technology which no longer requires phones to have a physical SIM card. By using Aerolo, you can simply use your smartphone to buy and top up data plans in foreign countries at affordable rates. It's as simple as going to Aerolo.com, purchasing your eSIM, and adding the data plan in your setting. You can also do this through the Aerolo app that's available on the Apple and Google Play Store. You can even have multiple country plans in your phone at the same time, switch on the required country eSIM, and still be contactable from your existing phone number. So say goodbye to the hassle of trying to find where to buy local SIM cards in whatever country you go to. Airlo gives you the freedom to connect with who and what matters the most, wherever you may be. For more information, visit airlo.com and try out your first eSIM today. Link is down in the description. One of the other issues is that distilled water doesn't have minerals like calcium and magnesium, which are very important for the human body. So drinking distilled water alone will not replace the salts and minerals that are lost through sweat and urination and may cause electrolyte imbalance. Also, removing the minerals from water will tend to make it acidic or at least almost acidic. And that can't be good for our bodies. To specifically address the problems associated with lack of minerals, the drinking water line is equipped with what we call a mineralizer. It is basically just a filter which contains a medium composed of the naturally occurring minerals that can be found in fresh water. You know, calcium, magnesium, maybe a little bit of potassium and other stuff. So the distilled water will pass through this medium and absorb trace amounts of these minerals, thereby regaining what was removed through the purification process. And by the way, distilled water has a flat taste that you might find weird. So in a way, the minerals actually provide a little bit of flavor and makes water taste like, well, water. But what about germs? You know, like bacteria and other microorganisms in the water that can really make you sick. How can they be removed? Bacteria and other microorganisms tend to thrive if the tanks are dirty or become contaminated for some reason. As part of regular maintenance on board ships, the freshwater tanks are emptied and manually cleaned at least every six months or as needed, depending on the freshwater condition coming out of the faucets. Moreover, the dedicated drinking water tank is dosed with chlorine tablets or some other disinfectant which can safely be used for drinking water. Additionally, on the final stage of the drinking water line is the UV sterilizer. That's UV as in ultraviolet. It's basically like an enlarged pipe which has a germicidal lamp inside. Now, this lamp emits a high frequency ultraviolet light, usually with wavelengths between 185 to 284 nanometers, which is deadly to bacteria and other microorganisms. So when the water passes inside the sterilizer, 
it gets exposed to the UV radiation and whatever microorganisms were swimming in that water will be effectively neutralized. After passing through the sterilizer, the drinking water is now ready to be distributed to the water fountains and to the faucets ready for drinking. By the way, another safety precaution that is being required nowadays is to periodically send a sample of the ship's drinking water to a laboratory for analysis. Some ships are also supplied with a portable testing kit so that the crew can test the water themselves as a reference point. This test is being required in order to determine if the water produced by the ship is free from contaminants that can be harmful if consumed. So, after going through all of that process, the question remains, is the ship's water really safe to drink? Again, many seafarers are still uncomfortable about the prospect of drinking the water produced by the ship. It has actually come to the point that most of them prefer to buy bottled water, which is an additional expense coming out of their pocket or deducted from the provision budget. The funny thing is, they spend all that money to avoid drinking the ship's water, but when the galley serves juice, they still drink it. Or if the ship is fitted with an ice maker, they still get ice from there. And where do you think the water to make the juice and ice comes from? I guarantee it's not from bottled water. Personally, I myself drink the water produced by the ship. I have always done so unless there is an obvious reason not to drink it, like if the water is visibly dirty or even a bit cloudy, of course I won't drink it. But in all the years I've been working on a ship, I've been drinking the ship's water and I'm still alive and never got sick while I'm on board the ship. The way I see it, as an engineer, I am in charge of the freshwater production process and I know what happens to the water after passing through each stage. So as long as the process is strictly carried out and everything is maintained the way it's supposed to be, I would say yes, it is safe to drink the water produced by the ship. I hope you enjoyed and learned something today. There will be more topics to discuss in our future episodes, but for now, class dismissed.